you just say a 9,000 square foot house is a pied de terre? Absolutely. God, for all the agents that are watching, this is the pinnacle that you're striving to. Absolutely. A 9,000 square foot crash pad. Guys, we all need a 9,000 square foot crash pad, let's be honest. <laughs> That's and true. It's LA. Today's episode, we are not only going to see a property that is upwards of $20 million, but we are going to hang out with my close friend and colleague, James Harris, who many of you remember, I'm sure, or know from Million Dollar Listing. To put things in perspective, James annually sells between 300 and 500 million dollars in real estate with his partner David Parnes of Bond Street. Of course, we hang our licenses at the same company, the agency in Beverly Hills. And while I have always had fun traveling with James and seeing his successes in our office, I find that the questions that everyone has asked him are basically the same. And I'm not sure that I think they're that valuable to our industry colleagues. So I have thought of a few questions for today to ask him that I think will be valuable for all entrepreneurs that are watching, certainly real estate agents. So stay tuned. Here we go. past the famed Chateau Marmont. What would be cool, some of the houses in this neighborhood actually get room service uh, amenities from the hotel. Let's see if maybe you can get that here. Hi. Fantastic. Why do you smell so good? Why do you always look so good? <laughs> We're having a moment. How are you, Benny boy? I'm good. Fantastic. Oh, man. Welcome to Sunset View, my dear friend. Pretty sick. What do you think of this? You're just welcomed with nothing but <sighs> sexy. This is like an in-your-face view. It most certainly is. More to the point, how are you, my friend? I can't complain. Excellent. Very pleased that we're doing this. Well, when wait a minute. asked me to do this, I thought, Benjamina. Of course I'll do this. He asked me to do this, you guys. Exactly. I was begging Ben <laughs> we could do this vlog, and here we are. Here we are. Love this guy. All right, Talk let's take me. a tour. Let's take a tour. Okay, so before we take a tour, let me give you the stats. We've got five okay. bedrooms. Five beds. Ten bathrooms, designed by Tim Campbell, so he's the architect and designer. Okay. It's new construction across three levels, but really beautiful, warm textures and tones throughout. It's not just the typical cold modern box. You'll sure. see it's a warm family home where it could suit a bachelor. And you have this promontory view Sick. from the case study storehouse all the way to downtown over to Century City. And then you see the big beautiful ocean. Case study number 22. That's right, baby. First house made out of steel. By the way, do you know that that's the the big print behind me in my office. I do know that actually, yes. And now you have it from the view of your house. So imagine selling this house, having the view print in your office, boom. This one's for Benjamina to oh sell. God, Purely based on that. Calling me that. I'm never going to reveal where that nickname came from, but so I appreciate you bringing it up. It's good, thank love you. Love good? Mm -hmm. He has a lovely girlfriend called Amanda, and they are soon to be wed. And she <laughs> is beautiful and wonderful and we're all living vicariously. Let's go check out the house. Let's go. <laughs> what I want to know from you yes. is who do you think the buyer is for a house like this? It's a great question, because every time I identify who the buyer is, uh -huh. I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Which so is great. Well, let, let's start where you think, and then we'll do the opposite of that. So the coolest thing about this house, I feel like it could sell to a bachelor, because mm -hmm. it's very sexy. We're right above the Chateau Marmont. We're literally 30 seconds from sunset. Sure. And people want to be close to the action. 
but it could just as well suit a family, perhaps an international family that want to peer to tear and they don't want a whole ton of maintenance. Mm -hmm. So it really does fit the bill for pretty much anyone in this case. Did you just say a 9,000 square foot house is a peer to tear? Absolutely. God, for all the agents that are watching, this is the pinnacle that you're striving to. Absolutely. A 9,000 square foot crash pad. Guys, we all need a 9,000 square foot crash pad, let's be honest. <laughs> That's and true. It's LA. So this is all your formal living. So you have your sure. formal bar sitting mm -hmm. area. Here's where you're Guests come in for a glass of champagne yeah. before you lead them outside and give them one sure. of the best views of LA. Incredible. What I love is that you have this beautiful seating area here, mm -hmm. fire pit, and then you have all of these sort of outdoor decks that sure. go throughout the whole property. Yeah, it's all outside. And the whole house points towards the view, sure. as it should, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So from the entrance where you come in, you're greeted with the view, and then everything faces this way. You have outdoor dining, indoor dining. Sure. Because who doesn't need two dining rooms? Well, I think what's crazy about yes. a lot of the homes that we see in LA yeah. is that they're all so open and they tend to actually live larger than yep. the square footage. If we're That's in like right. the East Coast in New York, everything's about formal entry yep. and separation, dining, formal living, den. But whereas here, because indoor outdoor living is California lifestyle, it's just wide open. And of yep. course, also you're getting maximum value out of the view when you can 100%. see it from everywhere. 100%, I always say the outdoors in LA are equally as important as the inside because the truth is you're living outside. Sure. Whereas if you're in London or New York, nobody wants to go outside. So that's what you have here is lots of decks, big views, tons of seating areas. Gonna steal that. Steal it. I charge. And then this, so you've got this big open plan kitchen. Wow. It's incorporated into your family room. You've mm -hmm. got the double island. But look so, at all the different walnuts and all the different yeah. textures and tones mm -hmm. that warms it all up and kind of puts it all together. Yeah, the builder could have easily just done this same marble countertop Easy. as they did here. Yeah. But instead, what, this is quartz, I think? Yes, it is. And then you've got marbles and then you've got the walnut woods. Mm -hmm. And some of these walls have these brass inlays. You've got yeah. a lot of detail. So it feels more custom. Exactly. Double side pantry. Yeah. Two sub zero wine fridges, Gaganel appliances, which you rarely see in these houses today. And what's also important to note is tons of cabinetry. Uh -huh. So many of these modern houses, they forget about cabinets. You know, there's like no and where to put things. Exactly. Yeah. And look at this. Love this double height. Sure. Right? When you walk in. It's like drama. It is. It's like fuck you. I love that. Please. So when you walk into a house, it has to feel special, right? Yeah. It feels special here. So coming downstairs, big white display, which I love. And then, boom, you're welcomed by this massive view. Sick. Right? And it's so rare that when you go into the lower level of one of these houses, mm -hmm. that you have natural daylight, let alone having natural daylight and a massive unobstructed view. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, so odd that your lower level yeah. is still where the helicopters are flying from. That's damn lucky, baby. You wanna have a quick game of ping pong? Uh, I'll give you one point. Oh, hold oh, on one again. second. Josh, may I call you right back? Let's go. And uh, these, these paddles don't have the, you gotta like hit it. Oh, Benjamin. This thing has no. Oh, builder you, never By the way, blames you've got the better tools. paddle, by the way. A builder never blames his tools. It's true, you do. Okay, here we go. Oh, two left. Okay, so. <laughs> this whole area is dedicated to entertainment. Wait, is that four oh, TVs? Four TVs, whole video wall. Then you've got this big deck, same views. Mm -hmm. Beautiful gym with a dry sauna and a wet steam, mm -hmm. which I love. Everything's moving more towards fitness. LA's all about the lifestyle, baby. So we dedicate and tailor to fitness. You've got Pilates. And the Peloton. Peloton, the weights. And here's where it's at. You finish your workout, you go outside, you have a fresh juice. See, they get the hundreds for you. Exactly, those were just customer for me. <laughs> oh my God, it's that. so small. Look at that, look at, small. It's a big, big uh, it's, it's more hair than muscle. Fuck you. Look at that, <laughs> show me yours. Look That's pretty, actually, actually you know for the first there. time ever, I can actually see something <laughs> when I do this one. Oh god, this is depressing. Oh my god. Get a trainer, people. <laughs> it works. Alright, 
of anyone. Let's show you the master suite, which where the magic happens. is exactly where the magic happens and where the checks get written, my friend. Wait, hold on. So, is this an espresso machine in the master? Gaganel espresso machine in I the master. I need this. Can't get better than that. You have a projector screen that drops from the ceiling. Oh, uh, smartly placed. So you can watch TV from your bedroom or you can sit in your sitting area. Look at the entire oh, this is great view. Too. Beautiful deck. But again, look at the walnut with the brass inlays and you have yeah. these beautiful Love it. dual closets, dual bathrooms. It's yeah. a proper master suite. It's good. This is really good. Ben Hamina likes it. No, no. It's and really you know what's crazy? is yes. like instead of staying at the chateau. Yes. You have your own chateau here. And you just have to pay 15 and a half million. I love and it. And now I'm going to put the question back on you. Who's the buyer of this house? Well, you know, I'm thinking it's maybe like a pied a terre for someone that He's wants a 9,000 square foot pied a terre. I'm thinking, you know, maybe it could be like a bachelor pad, but someone who has a taste level that's beyond the gray modern box. Someone who wants like a you more have earth to say tones, with more tones. Someone who likes it a bit more there earth tones. There's walnut with brass inlays. Wow, you know what? Oh I get God. it now. I actually get it. Oh it sounds God. so much better. <laughs> We're going to have to get me like a fake uh like passport <laughs> moving forward oh, anyway um, he, he actually thought that was a good project, i i did i do want it i want to put you on the spot a little bit why yes. don't we go hang downstairs i want to ask you a couple questions that i think you have not been asked before so let's go downstairs right, so, so i feel that i've seen you be interviewed before from many different i've seen you interviewed on tv i've seen you interviewed by the print media and i just feel like they keep asking you the same question that the original person asked you so that right yeah, well, look, I, I'm lucky enough I get to see you and hear you every day and the nuances of your business practice. And um, I I just feel like there's there are things about you that would be more valuable, certainly to your clients, my clients, also for the agent community. So Absolutely. I'm going to give you five quick ones. Well, you don't have to answer quickly, but just five, five questions. Sure, so, let's do that. Question number one is... How do you navigate the pressure of being one of the top brokers in our marketplace, knowing how competitive it, it is? And specifically, if for some reason a listing doesn't get to the finish line, which we both know often does not have, you know, is the agent's fault. How do you how do you deal with that? It's a very good question. I think navigating is kind of the key to our success. If we don't have a strategy in place for everything we do. How can we succeed, right? So a lot of these new agents coming into the game, they think, well, if I just go door knocking and I just sit open houses, I'll be successful because that's what other people have done. That's not necessarily true. They need to have a strategy in mind before they sit the open house or before they go door knocking. What are they going to say when someone opens the door? What are they going to say when a client walks into an open house? And I feel like the key to success in this industry is information. So if you have information, you become valuable. So for me, becoming successful is learning information and becoming a wealth of information. So for me, what I try and do is, and whilst we're running around and everything's so fast paced, is to try and take a step back, learn the market that I'm in, learn the deal that I'm in, and try and become a master at my craft so that I can always continue to evolve and grow and become more successful. So the key to success, in my words, is information. So piggybacking onto that, if I were to tell you, if I were to say to you, what should every agent, if an agent could only have one attribute, whether it's market knowledge, confidence, uh, putting in the hours, uh, maybe um, their sphere of influence, you know, their network, if they had to choose one, is it information? It really is, for me anyway. So because knowing the market. Knowing the market, knowing who your competition is, and learning it inside out, back to front. Because this industry is so competitive, it's so cutthroat, and there's so many people doing it. And so how can you expect to be successful or more successful than the competition if you're not a master at your craft? So for me, it's about learning the industry inside out, back to front, and being prepared to not give up at any point.
because you're going to be faced with challenges and obstacles and a lot of people shy away from some of those fears and it's how you get in front of those fears so that you can get to the next level instead of getting scared shying away and turning around and walking sure. behind you okay so information about the industry yeah. your industry colleagues and the market absolutely okay that was three things i asked for one i'm never going to give you one and i'm never <laughs> going to do what you tell me to. <laughs> no. but i love you but by the way you're a perfect example of success in this industry Thanks, you man. came from an industry like myself that had nothing to do with this. You were a sommelier. Yeah. You poured wine, beautiful thousand bottle, doll, you know, but that's what you did. Yeah. And you were a master at your craft sure. and everyone that knows you knows you were great at it. And yeah. so you came into an industry that was foreign to you and you learned the industry inside yeah. out, back to front. I assume you looked at what your competitors were doing sure. and you've now created a strategy and a formula that's created your success. And I feel like we all create our own success but we all go about it a different way. Sure. And for me, uh, it's always been about not giving up and just going for it. Cool. So it's speaking in, in terms of just going for it, yes. right? Um, what even at this level gives you fear? So, I mean, as human beings, we're all filled with fear. There's no question about that. It's how you deal with that fear, mm -hmm. right? And so, for me, I've taken on several taglines that work for me, false evidence appearing real, and the opposite of fear is faith. So for me, when I get full of fear or I feel like I need to do something that I'm scared of, I work several. So for me, I will take a fear and I will minimize it and make it so small and irrelevant throw it behind me and then step right in front of it. In fact, if something makes me scared, even remotely scared, mm -hmm. instead of jumping behind it, I'll jump in front of it immediately. Because mm -hmm. the longer you leave it, the more scary and fearful it becomes, that's, right? That's true. So I will always jump in front of my fears, no matter what they are, with the exception of jumping out of a plane, which I just fucking refuse <laughs> okay, to do. We'll do that <laughs> that's trip. another generation. Um, I'm sure our colleague and friend Santiago Arana will now convince us to of do course. that on the next trip. Of course, right? without a parachute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing sense. So, um, okay, so... So you, get in front you're, of your face. Yeah, you're doing great segues for the things I wanted to ask you. Good. Um, there have been a few things in my in my career that when I look back, I'm like, man, I why did I not do this sooner? I was so um, you know trepid around it. Is there something for you that you wish you had done sooner? I think firstly, we can never look at what we didn't do mm -hmm. in the past. Sure. We have to focus on today. Sure, um, that's the first thing. So no, I never look back and say I regret because everything I've done in my career has been a learning curve. And even if I didn't do it right, it's something that taught me for what to do next. But if there were one thing I had to say, it would be learning how to delegate. You know, I'm a control freak. My business partner, David, is a control freak. So between us, we are control freaks. Sure. And we want to micromanage every situation, every deal. We want to massage everything. We want to do every showing. Truth is, you can't be in six different places at once. So sure. learning to let go and delegate has been one thing that I wish I had done earlier, but we now have a good handle on it. So you guys trust each other implicitly. It's implicitly. just delegating to others. Of course. That's where you have trouble. 100%. I think everyone does. I had a coach once say, who you know? Who here thinks like they give VIP service? Right. And all the agents in the room raise their hand. Of course. And this is an aggressive coach who I won't name him, but I know you know who it is. Yes. Um, he he literally pointed at everyone and he said, "None of you do." And he right. said, "And guess what? The clients don't care as long as you do a good job." That's so the truth. it was a pretty meaningful moment to say like, "Hey." Um, Maybe I need to calibrate what the clients are looking for. That's right. Um, and understand your clients' needs and have a team that if you're not able to be somewhere, you know that the team that you have behind you is an equal version of yourself so that you can let go and be at another place. Sure. And the left hand needs to know what the right hand's doing. And that's the art of delegation is building a team that you can trust implicitly so that when one of you, when one of you are doing one thing, someone can pick it up on the other end. I literally every day read a different opinion about the market. Yes. I read I read an article last week. They're like, we're headed towards a recession and and the market's going to change and by 2022. 
Then I read an article, I'm not kidding, this morning from a very reliable source. They said the housing market is going to be incredibly strong mm -hmm. next year. So when you get this kind of varying information, what does it mean to you or nothing? It means nothing because the truth is I can type into Google housing market, housing economy, subprime rates, and I'm going to read 5,000 different opinions. Right. And then I'm going to go outside and talk to a hundred different people and they're going to give me a hundred different opinions. But I try and live in the now. I try and stay focused. I stay in my lane. Fundamentals seem great. Mm -hmm. Subprime mortgage world is good. Rates are low. The market right now is price sensitive. Right. Buyers are paying what buyers feel properties are worth. They're not selling for 20 percent premiums, yep. but they're selling for what they're worth. And I think if you assess the 2008 recession, which was one of the worst we've seen since the Great Depression, the yeah. market just went up, 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 too fast, too quick, and then boom, it went down. Mm -hmm. But seeing a correction, in my opinion, is a good thing. Yeah. So everything that's happening in the market right now, to me, is a good thing. But I feel like it's so important for us as agents to not all go out there and start trying to predict what the market's going to do. Because as agents, we can bring a market down by putting information out that we really have nothing to back it up with. So everyone needs to remain confident and stay focused and stick with what we're dealing with now, which is a great market, and continue to go out and do tons of business. So good time to buy. Great time to buy. Good time to sell. Fuck right, absolutely. That's where we end. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, my friend. It's <laughs> been you. a pleasure. Thank you. And that was amazing. We can do this anytime. <laughs> I'll hold Peace. you to that. Hold on, give me two seconds. Okay. Sorry, give me two seconds. No, no, you're fine. Addition. Tyler always says she spends her days waiting. This should just be the tag at the end where he's just like, Thanks. Okay, yeah, my bad. Oh, Here no. we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Delegating right now. Come on, Ben, yeah. how mean it? Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs>